Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to a very special event, a celebration of Bravo 22 Live. I'm Matt Whiteman. I'm a veteran as well as a very proud member of Bravo 22 Company. It's a recovery and well-being through the arts program made possible by the Royal British Legion and the Droid Project. Originally, for this YouTube, this live uh, lockdown thing, there was a, a target of subscribers for around 250. But it's just been told this evening that we've now surpassed that and we exceed 260. So well done, everyone. So, hello everybody, and I'm Lorraine Smith, and I'm a military wife. I'm a Bravo 22 company member, very proud one too. And this evening, Matt and myself are your presenters and also your journey guides. Tonight, we are celebrating all that has been achieved by our members over the last five months. Over 20 weeks, we've delivered 25 hours of workshops delivered by 28 creatives and 41 live YouTube sessions with over 6,000 views. Tonight, you're going to see some of their amazing creative achievements. So, sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. So, where did the journey begin? In March, the world changed and Bravo 22 Company changed with it. On April the 1st, Bravo 22 Live launched its first online session and a whole host of creatives across a huge range of disciplines came to entertain us, educators and encouragers to have a go. Soon we were writing, sculpting and performing. So every so often a mystery package from Bravo 22 would arrive on our doorsteps. Hey, absolutely love getting these boxes. I just received my portal uh, from Sue and Alice. Uh, um, I just can't believe, so there it is. Specialist crafts. These wee boxes are fantastic and I so look forward to finding out what's in them. So this little box might just look like a box of pastels, a couple of pens and some match boxes, but to me, it's a week of ideas, a, a week of stimulating my thoughts, it's a week of challenging myself and I know it's come from Bravo and then that conjures up all the thoughts of all my friends um, who I've met at the workshops um, and you know who I've spent valuable time with and also the new friendships that I've made. All I can say is how much Bravo 22 and the family that these have let me become a part of means to me personally, um, mentally, it has given me a real boost. Please keep coming up with ideas, and um, as long as you keep coming up with ideas, I'll come along. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart because it's been brilliant. Exciting stuff. So let's have a look at some of what happened once these parcels were opened. Hello everyone, my name is Ian Rudge and we are going to give you a brief glimpse of one of our Bravo 22 live drawing workshops. First, let me introduce you to our amazing artists. First, Sally Ann. Hi Ian, hi everyone, nice to be here with you all today. And then Clem. Hello there everyone. And now to our model, Sharon. Hi everyone. Now we're going to look at how we can give our figure drawings a sense of movement. The first idea about movement in art history was contrapostal. Now you need to say using the finger, fingers, contrapostal. Contrapostal. Counterpoise as we call it. And we will ask Sharon to demonstrate this idea. Sharon, could you stand with your weight equally on both feet? Arms at your side. Now ancient Greek sculptures were like this, standing rather rigid. 
most of us don't stand like this. If you can, if you can try this at home, and artists, if you can help us out, please, is stand as Sharon is. Then see if you can stand on one foot without moving your hip. Without moving your hip, everybody. That's impossible, Ian. Yeah, and how are you doing, Clem? Even, even trying to move my foot a tiny bit, it starts up here in my hip, really. Even like lifting my toes, I can feel it moving here. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's impossible. You, yeah, you just can't do that. Uh, and na now, can you stand naturally? Can you all stand as you would naturally? As you can see, it's just, it's all about balance. Thank you, artists, for helping us out there. You can sit down now. Then, sculptures were transformed and given a sense of movement. So the idea of contraposto was to give a sense of movement in sculpture and painting. Okay, Sharon. Now, can you move your weight onto one leg? and bend the other leg at the knee. Can you feel your hips moving and, and finding a comfort and a balance? Yeah, my hips gone down and my shoulder gone up. I think that's what contrapostal means, finding a balance. And can you lift your arms up at the side? And can you feel it's just comfortable? You're not rolling about or you're in a natural position. That's, and can you, can everyone see that the, the foot she has her weight on is directly under her, her head and the other leg is used to balance? Can you lift the other leg without changing your balance? It's no problem. Very good. And if everyone could try this on the street corners tonight, I tried it last night and, and I was arrested. But yeah, so don't you do that. And that is a contraposto. Can you can you alternate between the contraposto and the rigid, Sharon? Do it a couple of times so we can see. Very good. You're a natural, Sharon. A natural. <laughs> right, artist, time to do your bit. What I would like you to do is a couple of quick drawings, two quick drawings, one to show the rigid position, or one to show the contraposto position. Contraposto. Right, I'd like to do it in less than a minute. Well, ASAP, please, if you can. And we'll, we'll be watching as you work along, if you don't mind. So on your marks, get ready and go. And if you could show the, if you can try and show the form. And it is quite rigid. It's difficult when people are watching your, your work. It's, but yeah, it's, um, it's quite interesting as well to see what they come up with. When we're looking at Clemens from here, it looks, you don't get a sense of the, you know, the length of the legs. But yeah, they're both coming along nice, nice and fast. And just show the farm. And yeah, your time's almost up, artist. Right, if you can stop painting now, please. And present your pictures. Very good, sally -Ann. That shows the form. And that shows the rigid. Well done, Clem. Well done to you both, right? Let's get them on eBay. And let's see how much we make. Right, artist, you're not going to have a break. You're going to carry straight on to our next pose. That would be the contraposto pose. So, Sharon, if you'd like to assume the pose, please. The contraposto, let's see a bit of those arms. And, artist, you have a further one minute to show us the contraposto pose. Go. And I must admit, I'm impressed. With the, with the pictures Sally Ann's painted. And it's an interesting exercise, this. You know, if you do it yourself at home, just, just give yourself a minute to complete a drawing. Sometimes you get some surprising results. It's, um, 
think I've seen this um, artist of the year somewhere. It's, uh, I think you come up to 20 seconds to go. The pressure's on, the pressure's on artists. And you're in the final 10 seconds. Are you okay, Sharon? I am. And can you please finish your drawings, please? And present them to the cameras. Clem just putting the feet in. Oh, that's so relaxed. Well done, Sally Ann, and well done, Clem. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that little brief glimpse into the workshop, the artist workshop. And hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you all so much. You absolutely smashed the contrapostal. <laughs> anyway, as well as the drawing sessions, we've also been putting pen to paper and some of us have created some wonderful poems. Here's one that I wrote for this evening. We've had five months of skills development with the best creatives in the business centre. Our confidence has grown and through our works, we have shown that Bravo 2-2 yields achievements. Now, talking about achievements, um, we are moving on now to three very talented scribes and our first poet is Baz. Over to you, Baz. And Bravo 22 Live launched on the 1st of April, uh, it's live sessions. The first session was uh, Romeo and Juliet. We were challenged to write a poem from Romeo to Rosalind and this was my response. Entitled Rosalind, You Are Mine. I wish you were mine. Rosalind be mine. Can you hear me pine? Rosalind be mine. I will see you when I come to dine. Rosalind be mine. Meet me at nine. Rosalind be mine. My advances, I hope, you will not decline. Rosalind be mine. Like the sun, the moon, and the stars, let our hearts entwine. Rosalind, be mine. Our love will be sublime. Rosalind, be mine. Thank you, Baz. That was absolutely beautiful and so lovely. So, so lovely. Thank you so much. Now, our second very talented poet this evening is Graham. And Graham has been working on a poem, especially for the showcase tonight. Here's Graham. I've been very, very lucky to be working with Joe Bell, the poet, on, um, on, a, on a poem. And so I'd just like to share it with you guys. So here it is. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. It's taken me till series five, the latest drab TV programme to figure out what's going on. Mostly lying on my sofa, contemplating, thinking about thinking. I turn in the channels and it's just the daily misery that I call the news. Look around and these four walls seem to be getting higher and higher. Not long ago, normal, well, was just that. Yet, yeah. sunlight seems to shine two or three times a week, keeping us together in our family that is Bravo 2-2. We've mastered the masters, learned the word of the board, learned the use of spoken words, and found out that my story is mine to tell. And those boxes turn up at our door every other week like it's our birthday. Special gift from Sue and the gang. I look forward to our next project. 
we've made things, designed things, drawn things, and much more. And those special guests, I'm in awe of them all. They take their time up for us, answering our questions, telling their stories. I myself, and I'm sure you guys too, I'm so grateful to Al, Alice, and of course our Sue. And the background guys, without them, what would we do? What I'm trying to say is thank you. Thank you to everybody. The Royal British Legion, and of course the Drive Project too. And to you guys out there, especially from me. These four walls, they don't seem so high when we've got each other. So thank you. Beautiful, Graham. Absolutely sensational. Thank you so much. Now, our next um, story is uh, we had the wonderful, Bravo's wonderful Claire Murphy came along to do a storytelling workshop. And here is Bravo member Stevie with his story, specially written for tonight. Veronica Vixen was running scared. Loud Town were broadcasting news that new bees were coming to sting everyone. She panicked. She ran fast and deep into the Rattel forest lay down on the forest floor and began sobbing. She heard a grunting sound. She was surrounded by honey badgers, shrugging honey badgers, the worst kind of honey badgers. Leave this little poshy nosed creature to me, said Mummy Honey Badger. Now, Go and do what honey badgers are supposed to do, she said to the rest of her family. Please, please don't kill me, said Veronica. She was trembling with fear. Are you running from the bees? You creatures in Foolish Town are very foolish, listening to those loud town rumours. Here, have a little magic honey. This is from our bees in our forest. Kick a little every day and the bee stings won't make you ill. Oh, and you must join us for dinner. Veronica was a bit weirded out. She thought, why did she not kill me? Well, it's now that I must tell you that honey badgers have a very, very bad reputation. You see, they're very cautious, but they get rattled really easily. Honey badgers are very, very kind. And that night, Mummy Honey Badger and her family at giant bowls of beef and butter and told Veronica stories about the beautiful bees in their forest. Veronica never feared bees or honey badgers ever again and she would never ever listen to loud town rumours anymore. I bet that's not all he gets up to in the woods. Thank you all. And now for some visual, visual stimulation. Here are some of the incredible works of art that you've created over the last few months.
Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your work. Such a vast array of incredible talent. We're all wasted. Talking about talent, we had quite a few special guests pop in to see us. Now here's Mickey Goebel to tell you more. Thank you, Lorraine. Good evening, and ladies. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Over the past five months, Bravo 22 has had the pleasure of several top artists and performers live on the Bravo 22 YouTube channel, chatting, giving advice, and answering questions from our online audience. Firstly, let's start with Dame Harriet Walker, whose grandfather wasn't too keen on her pursuing what turned out to be a very successful career on stage and screen. I think I was nine years old when I first stated to the family, I want to be an actress. And of course, everybody said, yeah, yeah, because most little girls want to be an actress. And my grandfather wrote a letter to my dad when I was coming up to 18, saying, you mustn't pursue this. It'll be a disaster. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's got, yeah. And um, my dad was kind enough to never show me that letter till I was 30. And I'd already got going. Um, which I thought was very good of my dad. Um, he sort of ignored it. Well, there you go. Case of blind determination now. Fair play to Harriet's father for believing in his daughter. But determination more often than not needs to come for oneself rather than a parent. Selling yourself and believing that you is the key to success. Making the world understand that, yes, I am the best at what I do. Here's Glenn Baxter also known as Colonel Baxter, world-renowned artist, explaining how one of his most famous creations, Uncle Frank, first got off the ground. Okay, so um, basically I was trying to get my work seen, uh, um, in theory at some point, published, and I couldn't get any response whatsoever. People just either fell asleep or left the room as I was talking about my work. So I had a, a series of... Uh, I think it was four postcards printed by a local printer. And I took them dutifully in a little carrier bag down to the ICA bookstore and asked them if they'd they like to, to, uh, to stock uh, these, these postcards. So they selected a few and uh, Uncle Frank was uh, one of the images that they had um, chosen, but they only took four copies of it, four postcards, because they thought it wouldn't sell very well. This card went on to sell 15,000. There you go. Sometimes as an artist, the path you start on is not the, the path you end up on. Take me, for example. I started out life wanting to be a trapeze artist, but I was introduced to beer, cigarettes and wild women, so I naturally become a sailor. <laughs> David Threlfall, famous for being Frank Gallagher in Shameless, tells us how he sees his body as a canvas to change his appearance of every character he plays. Scatter! What I like to do is do a, a variety of things. I think I'm, I've got quite, um, I, I felt that through my art college training, the, 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 they're like sculptures to me. I think I've got quite a plain face in which I can sort of graft, graft things on. I, I, I moved from doing sort of drawings and pastels and a little bit of sculpture to making that, making my body be the, um, I don't know if my body's a temple, it's more of a friend's meeting house. Once you've started getting the recognition you so richly deserve, it's time to learn your craft, develop your skills before you can truly start heading for the big time. Tamsin Greg shows us how to go not too far in doing that. I think that um, it's very important to do things that uh, terrify us, um, not, not in a bad way. I mean, that take us to the edge of ourselves and um, challenge us out of our comfort zone because I'm really keen on inertia and I find myself being um, drawn into the comfortable place. And so I tend to push up against that and um, and do the difficult thing. And, you know, doing, doing Malvolia, that was really taking me out of my comfort zone. And I think that's very important. All the while, you must maintain your newfound skill. Here's my mate, Joe Brand, chatting about the survival in the world of comedy. Well, I think we've covered one, haven't we? Lower your expectations. 
Uh, be nice to everyone because you never know when you're going to come back round again. And if you've been horrible to someone in the past, they always have a, a long memory. Um, don't try and copy anybody else. I've seen loads of kind of, um, you know, Julian Clary wannabes or Jack D wannabes or Eddie Izzard wannabes. Sort of try, try and be yourself. And um, don't moan too much and don't be a diva. There you go. Thank you, Joe. Townsend warns us that complacency is the enemy. Push yourself, push yourself to greater things. I think with all things, there, are, there is an element of being able to learn certain skills. For example, if you could play a piece of jazz by learning the instrument and reading the music. But I think there is also that, so that's the discipline. But I, I think there is also something in people which I think of as gifts, the things that have sort of been given to us that we are able to do. And often we don't want the gift or we ignore the fact that it's there or we don't ever identify it or <laughs> we trumpet it <laughs> until it becomes too much of itself. So I think it's about just engaging with what is the thing that I have been given to be able to do and then protecting it and nurturing it and letting it grow. Well, lastly, let us return to the grand arm of contemporary British comedy, Joe Brown, who I had the pleasure of chatting with early this year. With a definitive guide to surviving the ups and downs of the modern celebrity world. She's done it. She's seen it all. But she makes it look like she doesn't really care. I think, um, first of all, one thing, I think it's like a good lesson for life, really. When I was on stage and it was going really badly, I just tried really hard to look like I didn't care what they thought. Um, and once you kind of keep doing that a bit, you eventually, um, you, you, you do it, you know, you, you fake it and then eventually you make it. So um, that really helped me. And I think the other thing as well is I had very low expectations and I think that's another good lesson for life because if you always think it's never going to go anywhere, then you're really pleasantly surprised when it does. But if your expectations are too high, you're constantly disappointed. And I have to tell you, I know a lot of comedians that are constantly disappointed. So we've been watching and learning from our celebrity guests, but not only that, our Foley team, led by award-winning Foley artist Ruth Sullivan, created an amazing storm. So since Shakespeare wrote a play called The Tempest, all about a storm, we thought it was only right to make use of our great sounds. And who better than the wonderful Neris Pierce to give us her version of Trinculo, a hapless jester caught in a terrible thunderstorm. I hope you got your brolly, Neris. Pierce. Neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. And another storm brewing. I hear it sing by the wind. Yon same black cloud. Yon huge one. It looks like the foul bombard will shed its liquor. If it should thunder, as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but to fall by palefuls. What have we here? A man? Or a fish? Dead? Or alive? A fish. He smells like a fish. A very ancient fish-like smell. The kind of not the newest poor John. Oh, a strange fish. Were I in England, as once I was, I would not have but a fainted fish. Not a holiday fool would pay a piece of silver. There, a monster would make a man. Any strange beast would make a man when they don't give a doit to relieve a lame beggar. They will lay out the silver to see a dead Indian. 
legged like a man, but fins like a fish, and fins like arms. <gasps> Warm on my trough! Oh! I do now let loose my opinion. I hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that hath lately suffered a thunderbolt. Alas! The storm is come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter hereabout. A misery acquaints a man that has a strange bedfellow. What on What on? Well. Well done, Nelson. Thank you. That was brilliant. Do you remember Tamsin Gregg talking about her performance of Malvolia in the National Theatre production of Twelfth Night? Well, here's Elwyn using her top tips to perform Malvolio's letter scene. For anyone who doesn't know the story, Malvolio is a steward in the household of wealthy Countess Olivia. He's not popular. And some of the other house members of the house have written a fake letter from Countess Olivia pretending that she's in love with him. Let's see what happens. Here is yet a postscript. Thou canst not know who I am if thou entertainest my love. Let it appear in thy smiling, smiling? Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore in my presence still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. Thank you, Elwin. David Threlfall, in conversation with Mick and Matt, shared his lockdown version of the Seven Ages of Man speech. We thought Bravo 2-2 should have our own version. And here's Luke's version to show us how it's done. All the world is a stage, and the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And in his time, one man will play many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms, And then the whining schoolboy with his satchel, with his shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. <sighs> and then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard. Jealous in honour and sudden and quick in quarrel. Seeking the bubble reputation, even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice. In fair round belly, with good cape on lined. With eyes severe and beard of formal cut full of wise saws and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful hose, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank. His big manly voice turning again towards childish treble, with pipes and whistles in his house. Last scene of all that ends this strange, eventful history is a second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, 
someone's eyes, someone's taste, someone's everything. Thank you, Luke, for the performance and the guided tour of Aylesbury. So, before I say goodnight, does anyone remember Bravo member Tip? He demoed a rehearsal of Oh for a Muse of Fire. Well, here's the finished version. Thank you, Bravo 2 2. Good night and cheers. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon. And gentles all, the flat unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram into this wooden O, the very cast that did affright the air of Agincourt. Absolutely incredible tip, a spine chilling performance. Absolutely brilliant. So clearly, confidence is high. We're performing darlings, we're writing, and we're making. But what happens when it comes to critiquing? I think it's from 1917. If COVID was around then, that's a COVID-19 mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, an object that you don't normally see from that angle. Yeah. So you can, if you look at the shape and the form and the curves, you can see that more than what it is, if that makes sense. He didn't make it. He only signed it. So he that's, that's it. fraud. That's fraud. I think it's interesting that it's not an everyday item because urinals really you'll only see in a public toilet. You won't see in a home. No. Um, you know, so it's really only the men that would see it. Probably nothing like this had been done before. Yeah. The shock thing, you know. What is there a phrase, the shock of the new? I think the fact that uh, he was involved in this expert, this was an exhibition of something. He was like a, a well-established artist. And it looks like he didn't make any effort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't make any effort. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Then, then, then it, it turns out he was, he was absolutely genius. You know, it's, it's this fine line between madness and genius. You could, just, you, could just, you could just put your name on, like just put a name on some everyday object. Yeah. Completely flip it. And Paul said earlier on that he didn't make it. It's normal to stick things together which which you just find you go to a tip and find artwork i don't think it's art me personally no. it's a normal object i mean and we said this before about it depends who put it there it reminds me of a more recent version of the the effect that this had was was it in the 80s the uh, the bricks at the tape modern now yeah. when that happened uh a lot of there was a lot of stuff about it and particularly the tabloid newspapers thought oh anybody can do this and they put bricks in the road and said look and then interviewed people on a the tv they interviewed people what do you think of that it's just a pile of bricks but i it 
surely it's the inspiration. Yeah. Do it, which not yeah. particularly, not the execution, but the inspiration. Sally. For me, with these pieces of artwork and the bricks, um, it, it, it is, for me, the idea and the concept and the whole. So when we look at the urinal, to me, that's about the shock element of the time that it was produced, just mm -hmm. post-war. Post um, there were ladies around uh, that wouldn't want to see things like that. He came from a very small network. Who's this man? And so for me, it's like it's provoking thought. It's provoking um, curiosity. Um, mm. And it, in, in itself, then, that makes an item, I think, desirable and saleable or shocking or repulsive. So I think it's the whole idea. being too critical i thought that was blooming amazing but before we go now brace yourselves let's take a visit to the bravo 22 comedy club oh matt i've got a joke go a on brilliant joke it's it's the funniest joke it's really good come on then do you want to hear it yeah, okay let's have it. two goldfish in a tank one said to the other do you know how to drive this thing? <laughs> is, is that it? He, even my no, comedy uh, thing, that thing up there, that unicorn, it didn't laugh, did it? It's on a banana. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to move over now to the pros, but a word of warning. There is some colourful language in this segment. Enjoy. Hi. My name is Sarah, and for those who don't know me, I had a fairly major brain injury about six years ago. Now, one of the things that this affects is my speech. So there I am in hospital, and I could only reliably say three words, yes, no, and fuck. Every morning, a nurse would come round, and they would ask me, would you like coffee, tea with sugar? And then they would stare at me, waiting for me to answer. In my head, I would reply, I don't like tea, so could I have coffee with one sugar, please? However, because of my broken brain, I would actually say, yes, uh, no, fuck. And they would stare at me. So I would try again. Uh, yes, uh, no, oh, fuck and the nurse would disappear and bring me a cup of tea. I hate tea. It's minging. I noticed I had a whiteboard above my bed. Aha, thought my broken brain. I can write my coffee order on there. So the next morning came and I was so excited. The nurse arrived and I pointed at the whiteboard with glee. However, it turns out that I had written, yes, no, fuck. Turns out I am a minging tea drinker like the rest of Her Majesty's forces. Yeah, I was just waiting for you to stop laughing because I know I'm hilarious. So next up is Dino Williams, a comic who by the look of things has problems with his virtual background. So is using a bed sheet for his background. Let's hope his content outweighs his linen. Over to you, Dino. So hi everyone, my name's Dean and I'm a proud father to my son, Finley, who is nearly two years old. He's so cute. He started crawling early. He started walking early. He started talking now. Um, but he doesn't always get it right. So 
I can say say please. He says peas, or I say say thank you, and he goes at you. But then sometimes he gets me into trouble. So we were watching this program called Andy's Adventures, and he basically travels back in time using a grandfather clock. So I tried to teach him clock, and my wife walked in, and Finley goes, Andy cock. So obviously now I'm in trouble because she thought that I taught him that word, but I kind of did. So. Cheers, Dino. Now, I used to love watching films when I was a kid. Particularly, I loved Mary Poppins. It contains one of my favourite words, but I've got bugger all chance of saying it these days. But for you, I will give it a go. Are you ready? Here goes. Super phallic kitchen kitchen expialidocious. Hmm. Next up is Jamie Williams. Jamie Wolliers. Oh, Jamie Water. Hero. <laughs> Fuck. Here's Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie. Blind Jamie. One day I was in the pub having a beer with my mate. He went off to the toilet and I got out my talking phone checking my WhatsApps, checking my texts, as you do. And then I could feel these ladies' eyes on me. She came over and she was intrigued with my talking phone. She goes, what's that all about? I said, well, I can't see, so my phone talks to me. She was clearly intrigued. And I could feel the whirring going on her head. She came back over, she goes, do you work? I said, yeah, of course I work. I said, she goes, what do you do? I said, I'm part of British Airways, new diversification folk, was a big word that was. British Airways diversification. And I'm going to be British Airways first blind pilot. She goes, never. You're never going to do that. I said, yeah. She goes, how do you do that? I said, well, British Airways with Boeing, they've developed this fully accessible cockpit. You know, it's got talking screens so I can find out the fuel and the level of the airlines and the flaps and whether the gears are up. Um, the throttle's got tactile buttons on so I know what position it is in. And she was clearly intrigued by all this. She goes, how do you navigate? I said, how do I navigate? I said, that's easy. Alexa, on the right-hand side of the cockpit, I've got this Amazon Alexa. And I say, Alexa. And it says, how can I help you? I said, take me to Spain. She was clearly amazed. She goes, what about if Alexa fails? Because sometimes I said, yeah, but that's easy. I've got Google Assist on the left-hand side, on the other side. That's my backup. She was clearly quite astounded. And I was giggling to myself in the back of my head. She goes, I said, do you know what the most difficult thing is there for me? It's not landing at New York. It's not taxiing down Heathrow. It's finding the toilet. So they've only put me on short haul flights. Now, I used to be in the RAF. Uh, so I've worked alongside loads of fast jet pilots. And to be honest, Jamie would be better than most of them. So that's it from our stand up comics for tonight. Uh, but next, we've got an awesome sketch for you. This has been edited and assisted by the genius that is Tom Crowley. Uh, this is uh, done by Sugar Free Steve and Sally Ann. So it's now over to them. Are you off? Stand by. Ready and waiting inspection, ma'am. You know we're going to Tesco's today? That is contrary to orders I have already received. What orders are there then, Bob? To sit in my arse, drinking beer, and watching Reservoir Dogs again, ma'am. Come on, your bed's past inspection, okay? I really think that you should try and come to Tesco's with me. It's not as scary as you might think. Come to Tesco's with me. Come on. It's not as scary as you might think. It's not as scary as you might think. Today is Operation Tesco. Situation, food provisions urgently required. Mission, secure the area, acquire provisions, safety drop package, maintain perimeter and depart ASAP. The threat is red. Hooded pizza eating foam wielding avocado obsessed selfie taking headphone wearing enemies of all genders are expected so stay alert at all times. There will be no backup on this mission. Timings 
Leave immediately under the instruction of Tracy. ETA test scores 1100 hours. Before you leave, you must Bob. ensure all admin is updated. Can you hear me? Carry on. Bob! You're not in the war now. You're not being yourself. Look, Bob, can we try something different now, please? Look, I've heard of this really great company called Bravo 22. They use creativity. They work with veterans and help them re-engage back into civilian life. Can we give it a try, please? Okay, love. If you think it might help. Bob? Get zooks! My lady love! Assuredly, I am cured! What have I done? The lady does protest too much, methinks. See, that's how you make people laugh, Lorraine. Uh, here we are at the grand finale of our Bravo 22 Live Five Months of Creativity. Thank you all for joining us for this incredibly special end of season celebration. Now, I know we're all a bit sad, but we're all also very keen to know what's planned for next season. So tonight, members are being offered the first opportunity to sign up for a Bravo 22 10 weeks online art skills course. And that's not it. Or a 10 week online theatre skills course. Amazing! So they're both starting in October and there's more information on these courses in the video description, plus a link to a sign up form. The art skills and theatre skills courses will be advertised to the general public in just a couple of weeks time. A more formal announcement will be made over the next few weeks, including information on other activities. Yes, there's more that will form part of the next season of Bravo 22 activities. If you're not sure about signing up, then I would strongly urge you to do it. I did. Bravo 22 Live has, to be honest, it's been a constant bright shining light through what could have been a very long, dark and lonely tunnel. So thank you. Thank you all for your company along the way. Lorraine. Thanks, Matt. And for me, Bravo 22 Company has been something incredible to be able to focus on. It's kept me busy. In turn, that's kept me sane, some would argue that. Um, but it's also, it's taught me many new forms of art. It's, it's also developed the skills that I'd already learnt in previous workshops. Um, so it's just been incredible. I can't wait for next season. Now, before we hear from some other members about the impact that Bravo 22 has had on them, we'd like to say some thank yous. And first and foremost, a huge thank you to the Royal British Legion and the Drive Project, whom without, we wouldn't have any of this. So thank you from our hearts, all of us. Um, secondly, we'd like to thank everybody who's been involved in all of putting the, all of this together, all of the viewers, all of you. And lastly, but by no means least, a huge thank you to the amazing Sue and Alice who have brought this to us and ensured a really smooth running process for all of us to achieve so much from. So thank you, ladies. You've worked tirelessly and like clockwork. You've, you've just been wonderful. You absolutely rock, ladies. Thank you. Much love from all of us. And sadly... That's good night from me. And it's good night from me, but a massive cheers. Stay safe, each and every one of you. Good night. Cheers. Participating in the programme gave me insight into a world of possibilities that I can explore further and I've already shared with others. Bravo, bravo. My name is Graham Lim and I would just like to say thank you to, to everybody for the last however many months that we've been doing this for 
really all I can say is that I am overwhelmed um, and just what Bravo 22 have made possible through through the lockdown has been just unbelievable it's been phenomenal and I'm eternally grateful hello Bravo 22 how do you do here I am on location shooting the honey badgers you asked the question, what does Bravo 22 mean to me? Sugar free. One second. Playing these roles um, with help from yourself and Kate has helped me to be a wee bit more proactive in everyday life and other things outside of this. Um, so it pushes boundaries um, both within Bravo 22 which enable me to push boundaries outside it and achieve more. What I have learned from Bravo 22 during COVID-19 Bravo 22 is good for my soul. It is life affirming. It is life altering. It doesn't matter that I write like a five year old, that I draw like a drunk graffiti artist, and I struggle to speak English some of the time. We might have sessions on Zoom or on YouTube but they have reminded me that I am not facing my demons alone. I might not see these people physically, however, I continue to consider them friends. For someone who has neurological injuries like me, who cannot travel alone and struggles at normal events, during COVID-19, Bravo 22 has been life-saving for me. It is awesome.